Why have we been spending all of this time talking to the men when this being has been floating through the halls of the building? Oh my God. That's a compliment. That is the Beyonce of the government. Welcome to Miss Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Kate McKinnon acting performances. Forgot about my new toys. Let's go. For this list, we'll be looking at the most memorable parts that this beloved star has played outside of Studio 8H. What's your favorite Kate McKinnon performance? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Carol Baskin, Joe vs. Carol. In 2020, Tiger King introduced us to a wild story about shady ongoings in the big cat conservation world and had many people hooked. Upon additional research for Joe vs. Carol, which is based on a podcast, McKinnon discovered there was a lot to explore. It's a deep dive into understanding who these people were. You see other sides of Joe and Carol. It's realistic, but there's a heightened sense of comedy and tragedy. The limited series explains the conservationists' hostile feud with Joe Exotic. And in addition to being an executive producer on the project, the actress brilliantly plays the now infamous Carol Baskin. McKinnon said she was drawn to the role because she likes weirdos. Well, these are larger than life yeah. characters, yeah. and I love larger than life characters. And I actually signed on to this before the show came out. It was oh. based on a podcast. Well, she certainly nailed that aspect of the character. Well, I, I'm sorry, I understand this must be very hard for you. What? Oh, no, sorry, I just didn't take my medication yet today. I'm, I'm allergic to cats. The show arguably struggled to match the craziness of the real story, but we loved seeing McKinnon dig her claws into this part. Number nine, Sam, Sisters. This 2015 comedy sees McKinnon playing Sam, one member of an apparently experienced party-throwing couple. Go to Costco, get a pan of hot wings, get some big basic salamis, it's a very small role, but it lets the star flex her brilliant comedic skills. She and Colleen Worthman, who plays her partner Cray, brilliantly riff off one another with an exceedingly ridiculous list of must-have party essentials. Let's hide, that's really high. Let's just see if I'm gonna fall. Stand in the way out. Look, there's Grant. Oh, you're not gonna slip on I can, I can. We need to get in there and help them. I need all your carabiners. I'm all over it. An extended scene shows just how far the actress is willing to go to make audiences laugh, with her ideas becoming increasingly nonsensical. We honestly don't know how anybody could keep a straight face watching this. Dan, you're a friend. Mm -hmm. If this happens, yeah. I just want to kind of let you know how it's going to go down. All right, I'm listening. It's not the standard three ladies, one guy deal you got in your head. Right. All right? It's such an underrated performance, and McKinnon definitely deserved more screen time. Number eight, Mary Winetoss, Office Christmas Party. In another party-themed movie, McKinnon plays Mary from HR, who tries to keep the employees in check. This is a multi-denominational holiday sweater. It has Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, the Buddhist Day of Enlightenment, and Boxing Day on it. Everyone's included. So what eventually becomes a full-on Christmas rager is perhaps her worst nightmare. I uh, do have a feisty cheddar on the bench. I think that pairs better with the mulled non-alcoholic wine myself, but what do I... Wait, wait, sorry, excuse me. You're having a Christmas party tonight? Oh, it's not a Christmas party. It's a non-denominational holiday mixer. But even she ultimately has to blow off some steam. McKinnon steals every scene, whether she's enforcing rules or letting her hair down. And remember that tonight, the decisions you make will have consequences that will haunt you for the rest of your professional lives. And, um, and so have fun. Even in a movie full of big names like this one, we can't tear our eyes away from her or her non-denominational sweater. It's a real credit to just how talented and funny she is. This brilliant performance is the holiday gift that keeps on giving year round. Number seven, Jandis Gartrell, Masterminds. Masterminds is a tongue-in-cheek comedy inspired by the 1997 North Carolina Loomis Fargo robbery. Jandis, I'm sorry I'm late. That's okay. I'm glad you got here when you did. I've been crying for hours. Have you? I had to put my makeup on three separate times. McKinnon plays protagonist David's eerily stoic fiance, Jandis. She's one of the few people who can play such a sinister character and still have us doubled over with laughter. In any case, we got to talking afterwards and I thought, well, that one's dead. This one's alive. I'll take the live one. 
David and Janice's hilarious engagement photo shoot, for instance, proves that even without dialogue, McKinnon's one of the funniest people in the room. Also, she and Zach Galifianakis share such incredible chemistry that we would have loved to be on sets during their scenes. There he is, the man of your dreams. He'll live here with us forever. It's like you're marrying both of us, David. Me and Mama. Plus, any movie where Kate McKinnon and Kristen Wiig share the screen is always worth watching. Number six, Morgan Freeman, the spy who dumped me. Even while fighting off bad guys, Kate McKinnon still knows how to generate the big laughs. And although she plays the best friend, she's certainly no second banana. That's what we'll do. We'll be the kind of women who jut off to Vienna with all of our awards. We're notable, we're recognized. We have trophies, baby. Best grandson? Yes. While certain critics found the film's comedy to action ratio uneven, McKinnon's fiery, bubbly, and side splittingly hilarious Morgan was a highlight for many. Her unique brand of comedy skillfully challenges the film's never ending stream of cliches so well that they circle back to being refreshing. Uh, oh my god, he's coming back to life. He's reanimating. Okay, it's a phone. That makes more sense. She and Mila Kunis are a dream team, but the former's performance makes a strong case for giving the wacky bestie top billing. Come for the female-led action comedy, but stay for McKinnon's zany energy and hilarious one-liners. Whoa, guys, guys, guys. It's just a microphone. Although, fair warning, you may be blown away. Two, three, four, hit it. Number five, Lupe, Ferdinand. Lupe, the calming goat, was a standout character in the screen adaptation of this classic children's book. This particular calming goat actually wants to be a coach because she really has too much energy to be an effective calming goat, which I related to as well. An overeager, eccentric trainer with a heart of gold sounds like the perfect fit for McKinnon. And it was. You want my help? Yeah, that would be amazing. I've been waiting for this moment my whole flea-bitten, tin-chewing life! Indeed, she made the character a joy to watch, both for the funny moments and the heartwarming ones. And apparently, some of Lupe's hilarious facial expressions were actually inspired by the actress, especially the sassy side-eye. Given the imagination required in voice acting, it's no surprise that this is among her greatest performances. Okay, listen up, F Train. I've got exactly 30 seconds to teach you everything about bullfighting. Number one, don't get hit. Number two, destroy anything that moves. And number three, actually, that's it. It's not that complicated. McKinnon's played many hilarious characters, but this one reminds us that she is the GOAT. Number four, Jess Carr, Bombshell. This 2019 movie made waves, and for good reason. McKinnon plays Jess, a closeted liberal working at Fox News at the time when its notorious misconduct scandal was being exposed. You're not getting fired. He cannot scale his anger. He's a perpetual outrage machine. That's why crazies love him. No offense to your family. You want to do the folders? No crying at Fox. No crying. She takes new girl Kayla, played by Margot Robbie, under her wing, and they become close. Despite Jess being one of her more serious parts, McKinnon manages to interject humor into most of her scenes. A closeted Democrat at Fox News? Oh my god, I what? thought that you knew that. No, I didn't know that. Does anyone know that? Can you not tell? You can't tell anyone. Of course I won't not tell. So However, as much as we love this Queen's comedy, it's so refreshing seeing her take on something completely different, especially since she nails it. Did you give my name to Megan by any chance? I'm. I may have um, worried about you out loud once or twice. Clearly, there's nothing she can't master, and we can't wait to see her spread her acting wings even further in the future. Number three, Pippa slash Kiwi, Rough Night. No one plays the kooky friend quite like Kate McKinnon, and Rough Night gave her the perfect playground to let her freak flag fly. This is so weird, you guys, because it's sort of like you're all Jess's best friends, I'm Jess's best friend, and so it's sort of like we're all already best friends, you know? She joins Bachelorette Jess and her other friends on what turns out to be a weekend they'd rather forget, 
As always, McKinnon's a total scene stealer. Thanks to her unpredictable shenanigans and pronounced Aussie accent, which she actually mastered through podcasts. I thought the best way was to listen to a bunch of podcasts. Hey, Australian smart. podcasts, which I had to learn how to listen to a podcast. I've never listened to a podcast before. The film's premise is one we've all seen before, but Pippa, aka Kiwi, is one of a kind, and we adore her. Do you want to dance, Pippa? Yeah, okay. But uh, call me Kiwi, okay? All my best friends do. No matter what you thought of the film, McKinnon's performance was undeniably the life of the party. Number two, Deborah Hammer, Yesterday. Imagine waking up to a world where you're the only one who remembers the Beatles. That's the story of Yesterday. We'll never disappear I've seen that road before McKinnon is a Deborah Hammer, an agent who hears artist Jack, the only person who remembers the band, singing their songs. And she smells an opportunity for cash. See, we pay, and then you come, and you write songs, and then we release them, and you make a ton of money. And then we take most of it. <laughs> of course, she has no recollection of the Beatles, so she assumes that the tunes are his. In reality, someone like Hammer would be highly unlikable. And she sees dollar signs, and she knows uh, just what a boon he is, and she tries to milk him for all he's worth. Yet McKinnon's charm and comedic flair work their magic, making her one of the movie's most compelling individuals. A particularly amusing highlight is when she tears Jack to shreds over his appearance and previous failures. We'd call you a complete failure. Well, it's not quite how I'd put it. But... We would say yeah. that you were a complete failure. Sit, please. While some were on the fence about the movie itself, we think McKinnon's Deborah was a hit. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Herself, Ted 2. We couldn't talk about McKinnon without mentioning SNL in some capacity. I'm sorry, Your Honour. I'm on my period. <laughs> Fiona Felicity Frizzle, the magic school bus rides again. We can't think of a better person to voice the younger Frizzle sister. Carlos, I want to say hi to you too. And DA, according to your research, you must realize it's, it's a, a whole, whole different, different Frizzle. Frizzle. Jill, family, a small part with a major impact. You're selfish and you can hurt somebody. You don't belong around children. You belong in an airport wine bar. You're right, I do. I do. Whatever. Hey, Maddie, come on. No, absolutely I'm not. I'm sorry. You yeah. had a good time, and now it's time to go. Regine Leo, Mother Superior, Felicity's mother, Leap. We're treated to the star's voice acting through three different characters. Get that part. Do you hear me? I want vengeance. I will have it. Wife Fish Inez, Finding Dory. A brief but memorable appearance. Oh, hi, Dory. Hi, Dory, are you lost? Yeah, well, where are your parents? Um, I can't remember. Oh. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Jillian Holtzman. Ghostbusters. Although the movie was met with mixed opinions, McKinnon's Holtzman was an adored breakout character. Who are you? Who are you? Holtzman. Virgo, avid skier, gluten full, and 100% jazz to meet you. A mad scientist in the best possible way, Gillian marches to the beat of her own drum. We've seen McKinnon play many characters that fit similar descriptions, but none quite as distinct as this one. And they used a chromium alloy for the hull. <laughs> I would have used aluminum, but I'm crazy. In addition to being as hilarious as ever, she went the extra mile with her facial expressions and actions in a way we simply couldn't ignore. Kate McKinnon's merely in a league of her own, and it was practically impossible to fault her performance. Gillian Holtzman was unapologetically wacky, weird, and wonderful, and audiences loved her for it. <sighs> you just got Holtzman, baby! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.